Coming up, tracking criminals. Detective Cooper follows his nose. Being more than a friend, this companion is a lifesaver. And this athlete tries hydrotherapy. California is famous for its entertainment industry and its larger-than-life characters. But there's a dark side to the Golden State, a high homicide rate. Finding and convicting the murderers is a dangerous and difficult job. Cooper, a three-year-old Labrador retriever, is the newest addition to the Special Enforcement Bureau of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. He works with his civilian handler and owner, Joe Delura. Cooper is a scent evidence dog. He connects suspects to evidence found at crime scenes. Myself and my partner were called to a homicide scene uh, where an elderly couple had been murdered. Their car and credit cards were stolen. A, uh, their vehicle had been found about a mile away. Uh, myself and my partner ended up taking scent with the scent transfer unit from the uh, driver's seat because we knew whoever stole the car had to sit in the driver's seat. When a person is in contact with any object, they leave scent behind. This scent transfer unit allows that scent to be vacuumed onto a sterile gauze pad. We don't disturb trace evidence, such as fingerprints, uh, hair fibers, any type of DNA and things. By actually touching the object, we don't have to. We can stay a half inch, a quarter inch off the object and not disturb any other type of evidence on it. Cooper often works with a bloodhound named Knight, whose handler is Ted Ham. Once we obtain scent from the uh, driver's seat, we then uh, have the bloodhound scented him with that scent. Knight and Cooper have different specialties. The bloodhound is a trailing dog born with the instinct to search. An experienced bloodhound like Knight can pick out trails over 100 hours old. He follows the trail of scent given off by the suspect's body. The bloodhound's long ears and excess skin on his face and neck help him when he starts a new trail. When Knight puts his nose to the ground, the extra skin in his ears fall forward, forming a cone that concentrates the scent. Knight's nose has brought them to a motel, but he's having trouble. He can't pick out a specific trail. The area has a high concentration of the suspect's scent, what canine training sergeant Bill Thompson calls the red zone. When he gets in the red zone where there's a lot of the suspect's scent and he can't make a decision, let's say we have four or five different doors where the, where the, and where the suspect lives, his scent is, is there because he lives there. It's, it's in all the hallways, it's, it's everywhere. Knight's nose is overwhelmed, so Cooper takes over. His scenting abilities are more specific. He's able to pinpoint where the scent is strongest. The bond between Cooper and I is really tight. We work together all the time. Uh, he lives with me at home, so we're constantly together. He's like one of my children. And uh, he knows what I'm going to do, and I know what he's going to do. And that comes from working so much together, training together, and also living and playing with one another. Cooper is a good working dog. He's uh, got a lot of energy, high energy, and that's what we want. One that uh, dog that'll stay on task and not uh, get easily distracted. Cooper and I are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we have to get our playtime in when we can. Uh, he enjoys swimming, so I bring him down to the lake. Uh, a lot and let him swim around and he's so active in that lake it's hard to get him out of it. In his first year on the job, Cooper worked over a dozen successful cases. But his predecessor Riley worked over 400. Cooper has big paw prints to fill. To keep Cooper sharp, Joe trains yeah, with him yeah. constantly. Cooper has many talents. Um, uh, he basically um, is able to find evidence, whether it's a gun, a screwdriver, a T-shirt, a rock that the suspect had. He's trained to identify scent from any evidence a suspect has touched. 
Another one of Cooper's specialties is finding hidden weapons or the scent of gunpowder. Joe rewards Cooper's success with praise and his favorite toy. Cooper may see training on the obstacle course as playtime, but for this police dog, it's more than that. We also do it because it teaches them the different obstacles they may have to go through, such as uh, fences, uh, through windows, upstairs, where a normal backyard dog may be frightened of those things. We need to expose the dogs to those things. Joe reinforces Cooper's Today. obedience to commands with his tennis ball. It's play reward. He's got a high play drive, so we use what's instinctive to him to motivate him to work. Stay, stay. Go get it. Here, here, leave it. Here, good boy. Here, good boy. At the motel, Cooper is taking up where Knight left off. He sniffs for the suspect at all the doorways. There's risk in what Cooper and I do. Uh, we work high profile crime. We're trying to uh, find a suspect immediately after a crime, so there is an element of risk. He alerts when he detects a scent that matches the scent from the driver's seat of the abandoned car. Oh boy. Oh boy. Joe summons the deputies, and Cooper withdraws. Show me your hands. I want to see your hands right now. Turn around. Do it now. In one man's pocket, they find a credit card belonging to one of the victims. The suspect is arrested. But Cooper's work isn't finished. He still has to confirm that the suspect had been in the stolen car. Scent samples were taken from the suspect and from three other people not involved in the investigation. Each person's scent is put into a box that has a hole in the top of it. We then bring Cooper in and we give him scent that we've taken from the crime scene. And then he goes and checks each one of the boxes. If he does find matching scent, he then lays down. Cooper's nose confirmed that the suspect arrested at the motel had indeed been in the stolen car. During an interview at the police station, the suspect confessed to the double murder. But no crime can be solved solely on the dog's evidence. Solving a crime is like working on a puzzle. Scent dogs like Cooper are just one tool crime scene detectives use to point them in the right direction. The bond between Cooper and I is tight. It has to be because we work together so much and he relies on me and I rely on him. And it's a matter of trusting one another. I really enjoy working with Cooper. He'll have a long career. He's a good dog. Jonas Naira is a scientist working at the National Institute of Health in Washington, D.C. She directs a $1.5 million study and supervises seven people. Joan also lives with mental illness. I have two illnesses. Um, I have bipolar disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. Wasabi, Joan's six-year-old Rhodesian Ridgeback, is a psychiatric assistance dog. He can sense when Joan's manic episodes are coming and he alerts her. Because of his stabilizing influence, Joan has a successful career. Without Wasabi, I think I would probably be unemployed. Wasabi likes going to work with Joan. It gives Wasabi a purpose to each of his days, and dogs like structure, and there's always structure around going to work. Sometimes, Joan gets so wound up during business meetings that it becomes hard for her to concentrate. Wasabi alerts and intervenes with a nudge that brings her back to the present and helps her focus. He is incredibly aware and attuned to my every move, my mood changes. 
So when something is changing in me physiologically as a part of my illness, he picks up on it and it affects his behavior. Whether he nudges me with his nose or just looks at me in a strange way, I've learned what those behaviors and looks mean. Why don't I stop talking for a while and you, you guys uh, tell me what you've been up to. If there was such a thing as a meter that I could plug into my side that could give me a readout about whether I'm manic or depressed, Wasabi's that meter. Wasabi is part of the group. He's a real character. He comes in and he uh, walks around and everybody meets and greets and gives him a pet and then he'll kind of settle down and flop down on the floor and you hardly even know he's there. He's, he's really just kind of part of the group. It's really a pleasure, actually. I think it's nice having animals around. And I really like what he does. I see how it makes Joan really happy, and it's, it's good. Hey, Sal! Sal, come! Wasabi is a Rhodesian Ridgeback, a breed developed in the African country now known as Zimbabwe. The name Ridgeback refers to the way the hair on their spine turns forward and forms a ridge. Ridgebacks are people dogs that make quiet and gentle companions. But its other name is African Lion Dog for its ability to keep a lion at bay while a hunter moves in. I grew up with a Ridgeback and I really loved him. And I always thought that when I grew up, I wanted to have a Ridgeback of my own. They're kind of majestic, uh, couldn't care less attitude. They're, they're full of themselves and I like that. Wasabi wasn't trained specifically to help Joan. Alerting her to oncoming manic episodes was just something he started to do. Perhaps because Wasabi is so bonded with Joan, he's very familiar with her normal behavior, so that when something changes, however subtle, he senses it. Science has yet to fully explain how dogs can do this. Wasabi's very attuned to me. His eyes are always on me. He's glued to me, and that's part of the bond, that's part of the therapy, is this intense, close relationship that I have with him. Wasabi has even saved Joan's life. At home, Wasabi nudges Joan and reminds her to take her medication. What he's taught me to do is pay attention to the earliest signs of mania. Previously, I was not tuned into those, and I had no idea I was manic for most of my life. Um, but, you know, Wasabi has really helped me to, to sense these things better. I have experienced suicidal feelings for as long as I can remember. I mean, back to as early as the age of five and six. And my first suicide attempt was when I was 10 years old. Um, so it's been with me for a long time. Once, when Joan was severely depressed, she locked herself in the bathroom. I had so much disgust with who I am as an individual that I felt a need to harm myself. Wasabi then associated me closing the bathroom door with there being some risk involved. So he actually will not allow me to close the door. He scratches at the door. He wants me to open the door. He has to see me. He prevents me from acting on that compulsion because I know that when he witnesses that, it hurts him, and I don't want to do anything to hurt him. Wasabi's hugs help calm Joan. She tunes in to his breathing pattern to help lower her anxiety levels. I ask Wasabi for hugs, usually when I'm very depressed. Good hug. It's not something that a dog is normally comfortable with, to have somebody wrapping their arms around them. But because Wasabi is very tuned into me and he's been obedience trained, um, he will allow me to do that. And the physical contact, the warmth from his body is so reassuring to me. It's so safe. I think it would probably be accurate to say that he buffers my fall. He can't take the depression away, but he helps me be able to exist in my own skin at a time when it's very uncomfortable to do so. Tasks that can be trained to help a person with schizophrenia include hallucinations. Joan is president of the Psychiatric Service Dog Society. She raises awareness about mental illness 
and the important role that dogs like Wasabi can play. Uh, most of us were unemployed, unemployable, because we were very sick. And we knew that our dogs were helping us in some way. We were just struggling to articulate what it is that they're doing for us. Um, Joan gets like, her message oh, out. She's also planning clinical trials to prove the effects psychiatric service dogs can have. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Wasabi always looks out for Joan, even when she's at her counseling sessions. Whenever I'm in my therapy session and if I'm talking about something uh, that is maybe upsetting to me or it causes me to feel pretty anxious, he picks up on that. He's very attuned to me, even when he has his eyes closed. And he will put his head up and look at me to see what's going on with me. He, he's always checking in with me. And, and his checking in with me causes me to check in with myself. So how are you feeling about his going back? Patricia Fisher, Joan's psychologist, says wasabi makes a big difference. Psychiatric service dogs can serve as another very important and for some people essential um, complement to uh, talk therapy and medication. He offers her a means of controlling and managing herself when she is not able to do so. There's no doubt in my mind that Wasabi has contributed significantly to Joan's therapeutic progress. <laughs> Wasabi doesn't just alert Joan to subtle changes in her behavior. He warns her about big mood swings, too. Come on. Wasabi means everything to me. He has given me back uh, my life. He gives me the balance I need. Wasabi calms me down. Good dog. Frito is a speed demon. His owner, Barbara Chestnut, is very proud of him. Good boy, Frito. In the past two and a half years, Frito has won many regional and national Jack Russell Terrier events. When I bought Frito almost four years ago, he was just going to be my pet and just my pal and just my companion. I brought him to a Jack Russell show and he won every single thing we competed in at that show, every single event. Frito is an athlete. Frito likes to win. But at a competition eight weeks ago, disaster struck the champion athlete. Frito severed a ligament in his back leg and needed complicated knee surgery. The Incredible Dog Challenge, a popular yearly event, is just days away. For Frito to be at the top of his game, he's got a lot of specialized training to do. Twice a week, Barbara has been bringing Frito to a physiotherapist, Lillian Mateer. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How's Frito doing? Frito's doing really good. Great. And how are his walks coming along? He's walking a lot more than normal. OK, so we're ready for his hydrotherapy. Yeah. OK, so come on back. OK. Frito's been working out here for weeks, so he's accustomed to this type of exercise and attention. His therapy includes sessions on the underwater treadmill, plus massage. Frito's really special in that he's probably the smallest dog that has had this type of surgery on his leg. The hydrotherapy is an excellent tool to rehab Frito because the buoyancy effect of the water unweights his body by about 62%. So with any type of surgery or injury, they're allowed to exercise in a gravity-free environment, which is ideal. Frito's leg doesn't bother him as much in the water. Like Frito, NASA astronauts use the near weightless environment of water to train too. His weight bearing is still not completely normal, and that was fairly evident in the um, hydrotherapy tank. You could see it at different angles. But our ultimate goal is to get him fully weight bearing, because he'll need to do that to be able to return to jumping. Each therapy session ends with massage and stretching. 
Lillian also assigns exercises for Barb to do with Frito at home. Oh, good. Like they should be. He's making really, really good progress, and we're very happy with the results. Okay, Frida, go tunnel. Go on, go tunnel. Barbara usually coaches Frito through a hurdle course before a big race. But today, to keep it low impact, they're just using the tunnel. What I'm doing is I'm looking at Frito right now to see how his, he's using his back leg, to see if he's favoring his leg. Go tunnel because he's not jumping, so he won't become hurt, he won't become lame from doing this. So this is to actually observe to see if he's using all four legs correctly. Let's go for a walk. Two long walks every day help to build up the strength in Frito's leg. But his injured leg is not his only obstacle in competitive sports. He's a pudding variety Jack Russell, so he's heavier, his chest is wider, and he's shorter than the other dogs. Has he recovered enough to take part in this year's incredible dog challenge? 60 dogs and 4,000 spectators attend this annual national event. Even though Barbara and Frito have traveled across the country from California to Missouri, Barbara still isn't sure whether she should let Frito race or not. He favored this for a long time, so is. Barbara consults the on-site vet, Dr. Ann Broder. Yeah, so he's really pushed this leg much more than even with your physical therapy yes. and practice sessions. Yes. And so it, The vet it's confirms Barbara's that. suspicion. It's too early to start racing Frito again. So poor Frito has to endure the torture of watching the other Jack Russells race. Frito had to sit this race out. But today, this spunky Jack Russell receives an honorary medal for all his wins this season. And if Frito and Barb get their way, he'll soon be back in the race with a vengeance.